Boris Johnson's former aide, Dominic Cummings, says he will swear under oath that the Prime Minister lied to the House of Commons over the bring your own booze gathering. Well, the Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, joins us now. Um, I mean, this Dominic Cummings thing, it's just one hand grenade after the next, isn't it? And a lot of our viewers, I have to tell you this morning, are saying that they don't necessarily believe him in the same way as they don't necessarily believe the Prime Minister. But he is prepared to swear on oath that he went to see the Prime Minister five days before this party that the PM says he went to um, and warned him that it would cause real problems and he was brushed aside. What do you make of that? Well, look, um, uh, Number 10's been clear and categoric that that's not true. But, of course, in relation to this and all the other strands of claims and assertions, we have this investigation impartially by Sue Gray, or report um, uh, relatively swiftly. I think it's right uh, in reference to the, uh, the significance, the importance, the public frustration around these issues, to let the Sue Gray do that job um, uh, and not to sort of interfere or prejudge it or, or, or preempt it. How do you solve a problem like Cummings? Um, look, uh, I, I'm not really sure I'm equipped to answer that question. Well, well come on, it's a, it's it's a, a fair pertinent question. question. He says he will um, give testimony under oath that the Prime Minister lied to the House of Commons. Um, he says that, you know, he warned the Prime Minister that he shouldn't be at this party. I mean, those are very serious accusations to be made about the Prime Minister. Who do we believe? The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, in his statement to Parliament, or Dominic Cummings, who knows the Prime Minister very well and knew exactly what was going on at that time? Well, the Prime Minister has been to the House of Commons. He's explained very clearly that he, in good faith, thought it was a work event. Number 10 have categorically uh, rebutted what uh, uh, Dominic Cummings has said overnight. And, of course, Sue Gray will, uh, will look into all these things uh, as the impartial uh, investigator into it. I, th I think that's the right thing. Let that investigation uh, conclude. OK, she... so, hang on. Dominic Cummings has called Boris Johnson a liar. Are you, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Justice Secretary, calling Dominic Cummings a liar? No, I think what I was saying is, um, first of all, I, I, I uh, uh, pointing to what Number 10 have categorically said about this claim and saying that it's for Sue Gray uh, to reconcile or to look at the competing claims and assertions that have been made in relation to all of these issues. Well, only one person can be telling the truth. Which that one is, is true. It? So which one is it? Well, look, I'm, I'm confident that the, what the PM said is right, but, but of course it's right that in relation to this and the other claims and assertions that have been made around the uh, what happened in Number 10 Downing Street should be looked at by Sue Gray impartially. And I guess what I'm saying is allow Sue Gray to do that job. There'll be full transparency in relation to the conclusions and the outcomes. Um, you, sorry, I'm <laughs> no, sorry. No, carry on. But, but you're not letting Sue Gray do her job because you've said that the Prime Minister has given a very clear statement to the House of Commons. You've already prejudged <clears throat> what happened on May the 20th, that, that, that Boris Johnson says he believed he was at a work event. So you have already prejudged the inquiry. So you must be saying that Dominic Cummings is lying then. No, it doesn't follow at all. I'm pointing to the, what is true as a matter of fact, which is the PM has made that statement to the House of Commons and then saying in relation to all the claims and the uh, assertions that Sue Gray is the right person to, um, uh, to, to impartially investigate and that we'll get the answers and the transparency very shortly. Setting aside who's telling the truth and who's lying, uh, and I wonder, actually, as the days drift by, if we'll ever get to the bottom of it. Um, but setting that aside, this is a horrible look, isn't it? I can't remember such a kind of a sleazy atmosphere swirling around Number 10 Downing Street. In all my years um, being aware politically, let alone being a journalist, where you've got a Prime Minister who, on a daily basis, left, right and centre, is accused of lying. You've got someone like Dominic Cummings, who's coming out of the woodwork every 24 hours with another allegation, and now he's prepared to swear on oath that this one's true. It's horrible, isn't it? It's, it's a really nasty, smelly mess. Well, look, I think it's um, uh, uh, a, a serious and significant issue. It needs to be taken seriously. We understand the public frustration. But, of course, at the same time, uh, it's a massive distraction. I mean, what I want to be talking about is uh, the great job that the Prime Minister has done with the Cabinet team in getting ourselves the most boosted country in Europe with vaccines, the most tested country in Europe so we can uh, manage the spread of the virus, uh, the most uh, uh, antiviral drugs, which is stopping the really severe cases. And as a result of the approach that... The 
the government has taken and the PM has led. We've come out of lockdown uh, in a way that Labour opposed. We've got rising jobs, so unemployment's going down, rising wages, and a fast-growing economy. But uh, but I accept that. Labor, talk, le that sorry, that Labour helped you out with, plan, with the Plan B vote in Parliament, actually. And the reason that there is a massive distraction is because the Prime Minister does not appear at the moment to have the full trust of... I mean, look at the polls. Labour way ahead of you at the moment. You have uh, a number of your own Conservative MPs on record publicly saying the Prime Minister should go. Um, you have a number of letters sent in to the 1922 committee. I mean, the Prime Minister is the reason that we are all currently distracted. It's because the Prime Minister is alleged to have broken his own rules. I think, in fairness, the, um, I mean, it does relate to the PM, but also the, the wider conduct of civil servants and officials around uh, Downing Street. But I accept this is a significant issue. That's why there's an independent investigation. All I'm saying to you is, and, and I accept it's a distraction from the things that we want to be talking about. And, I, I, you know, I have to say, we're in the business of seeing us through this terrible pandemic. I think the Prime Minister has done a great job with the booster campaign, along with the Health Secretary. The economy is firing uh, back the recovery, jobs going up. Uh, wages going up. And, of course, I want to be talking about the crime-fighting package that we're introducing, recruiting more police, tougher sentences for dangerous sexual and violent offenders, which Labour and the Liberal Democrats have, have opposed, and our new proposal, uh, uh, a measure today, to increase sentencing power in the magistrates' courts so to give victims swifter about justice. That, but it's not what the people are talking about, is it? And it's not what the media are talking well, in, about. In, I mean, in, or even in, your own backbenchers. I mean, Sir Roger Gale very eminent Conservative, long-serving backbencher, has gone on the record and said that he believes that his Prime Minister, your Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, uh, misled the Commons. He says that on uh, December the 8th, the Prime Minister stood up at the dispatch box and said categorically that there had been no parties at number 10. And then last week, he stands at the same dispatch box and said, well, actually, yeah, there was one. I thought it was a work do, but it obviously was a party, and I did go. Um, now, Sir Roger Gale says, as a Conservative backbencher, that that's misleading Parliament. Well, look, I'm, uh, precisely because we've got a string of claims and counterclaims and assertions that Sue Gray is there to conduct an in independent partial investigation, I want to let her uh, do that, um, precisely because otherwise Susanna will accuse me of preempting the investigation. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm damned if I do by you and I'm damned if I don't. I want to be open and transparent. But the real thing is, this is a distraction from the crime-fighting agenda, the economic agenda. Um, the magistrates' court's powers that we're introducing are critically important to giving the victims, some of the most vulnerable in our society, swifter justice. Uh, cracking down on, on, on crime, uh, getting the courts uh, backlogged down. A and I accept um, that, that uh, all of the other stuff is a distraction from this. But I do think it's important. And you talk about what the public care about. I mean, I'm out knocking on doors in my constituency. Uh, and, and yes, of course, um, uh, this has been raised. But, 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 but mainly, um, very, very few people have raised it with me. Mainly people want to know that we're talking about their priorities, which is the economy, the cost of living, yeah. uh, crime fighting. Okay. And, 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 I, and I do, but I do accept, I'm, this is uh, my way, I do accept that all of the other stuff is a distraction from us focusing on the people's priorities. And the the reason it's a distraction is because of the alleged behaviour of the Prime Minister of this country. And you're the Justice Secretary. So, if Sue Gray finds that the Prime Minister has broken the rules, should he resign? So, Susanna, you started by saying I shouldn't preempt the investigation. I'm not going to do that, and I'm not going to uh, start giving judgments on hypothetical questions. It's just not... I mean, in your own terms, that's not the right thing for me to do. What I am focused on is uh, the work we're doing to drive up um, the prosecutions of... What uh, should the, the consequences... What's the point of an inquiry if we don't know what the consequences would be? What should the consequence be? Well, there'll be a, a full transparency in terms of the outcome. Uh, the Prime Minister will report, uh, as he said he will, give a statement, report back uh, to Parliament. Uh, and, um, and, and there are a whole range of rules, the, the Cabinet Code, uh, the, the cabinet code uh, for, for ministers, which include, including uh, the Prime Minister, and ultimately the, the, the accountability that the, the voters give us. Um, and that is the sharpest of all. So, um, he won't, so if he's found to have broken the rules... One of the consequences is not that he would resign. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I'm going to heed your earlier advice not to get drawn into preempting the outcome of the investigation. All you right. said it, and I, quick, and I agree with you. One quick question before we, we let you go. Um, have you seen the Prime Minister recently? Uh, he's completely vanished. No, I've seen him, and uh, um, uh, I'll be attending Cabinet um, uh, shortly, uh, and I'll see him in person.
Okay. okay. And, and I know you don't want to prejudge any investigation, so I'm going to ask you, it as a completely neutral hypothetical. If a Prime Minister mm -hmm. is found to have lied to Parliament, would you expect them to resign? Oh, look, the Cabinet Code of Conduct is clear and I believe in upholding it. So is that a yes? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think if yes. you lie to part, I mean, the, the, uh, look, the, 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 the rules are set out very clearly in relation to this. You shouldn't mislead Parliament. Uh, you certainly shouldn't lie, deliberately uh, mislead Parliament um, uh, without correcting it immediately if you become aware of facts that change. Or, uh, and absolutely, the code of conduct is critically important. I take it very seriously. I think the integrity of what we do, uh, those of us who hold high office, is incredibly important for the trust of the public. And I get, I understand the frustration that people feel about this. OK, so if a Prime Minister is shown to have lied to Parliament, he should resign. He should resign. That, that is clearly uh, the case under the, uh, uh, the Code for Ministers. OK, okay. good. We've got All right. a clear answer there. Justice Secretary Dominic Robb, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.